Over the last couple of weeks, we've been covering on this show the protesters in the city of Detroit who've been taking to the highways in and around the city and driving really ostentatiously slowly. They are causing huge traffic jams on purpose, being civilly disobedient of the minimum speed laws in order to bring transportation to a halt. They are protesting the citizens of Detroit having their voting rights taken away. Michigan's Republican Governor Rick Snyder overruled local voting rights thus far in Flint, Michigan, and the Detroit suburb of Allen Park. He did it in the school districts of Muskegon Heights and Highland Park. He did it in Benton Harbor, too, taking away the power of local elected officials there. Rick Snyder relieved those towns of their democracy because he said they were too broken to be trusted to use it anymore. Instead of being allowed to choose their own locally elected officials, Rick Snyder instead installed a single state-appointed emergency manager who has basically unilateral, unelected power. Then two weeks ago, Governor Rick Snyder decided the state would take over Detroit, too. Take over, take over the state's largest city. Depo d democracy had to go in Detroit, just as it had in all those other smaller places. Today was takeover day in Detroit. Motor City, meet your new unelected boss. It's this guy. On the emergency manager's first day on the job, Detroit residents decided that instead of just slowing down the traffic in their own city in protests like they have been doing, they would also charter a couple of buses to take their case to Cleveland, specifically to the headquarters of the new emergency manager's law firm. That law firm not only has supplied the emergency manager, who now has unilateral control of the city, the same firm is also reportedly the leading contender to get the job of restructuring Detroit's finances. So it doesn't matter who the residents of Detroit voted for to represent them, that's being overruled in favor of putting their fate in the hands of this Cleveland law firm. And that is not sitting well with all of Detroit. Detroit residents also gathered today at the statue known as the Spirit of Detroit. They noted that Michigan voters repealed the emergency manager law in November only to have Republicans pass a new one weeks later. This has not sat well with them, and neither has losing their local democracy. To go to the extent where you would deny somebody the fundamental right to participate, to elect the public officials, to participate in the direction that the city goes in, it is wrong. Speakers today in Detroit told the crowd, stand up for your rights. We will aggravate, agitate. We will be a nuisance until our voice is heard. Somebody else warned the crowd, quote, those of you in other cities who think it won't happen to you, you just wait and see. She argued that being put under an emergency manager left her town, Highland Park, in worse shape than when the emergency manager got there. Michigan has been experimenting with emergency managers for a while now. And that experiment has produced bad enough results that a couple of Democratic congressmen from Detroit are now asking for help from the federal government. Before now, they had asked the federal government to consider how emergency management gets rid of local voting rights which is particularly fraught given that half the black population of Michigan has now had its local voting rights taken away by these measures. But now those two Detroit congressmen are asking for another kind of help. They're also asking the Government Accountability Office to look into whether emergency management even works. Quoting Congressman John Conyers, it is difficult to identify a single instance where an emergency manager has succeeded in turning around the financial fortunes of a city or jurisdiction. And yes, if you consider all the times that Michigan has taken away local democracy supposedly to fix a broken place, if you look at the way they've done that going way back, only the one town on this map, which is marked with a red star, only that one cute little tourist town has actually recovered, has recovered, has been re gone through emergency management and then been given their democracy back and then stayed healthy. Every single other place on this map where they have tried it is either still under state control or is faltering. And so why exactly are you giving up your local voting rights? They say you have to because your local democracy cannot be the means by which you solve these problems. But if the problems in your state persist, even under dictatorial control of somebody you didn't elect who has unilateral authority to do everything, including abolishing your town without you saying so, then why are we bothering to get rid of democracy and hand it over to those folks? What's it for? Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. We do not give up. Expect surprises. Subscribe.